Hello friends and welcome back to our fast API tutorial. In this video, which is number 28 in the series, we are going to be touching on middleware and cores as it relates to uh, middleware. So let's go ahead and create a middleware. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a class, my middleware. And then we're going to need to create an async def dispatch method, which will take in a request, which is a request type, and the call next method. And for now, we'll just do pass. Now we're gonna to need to inherit from something here. So what we're gonna inherit from is called the base HTT middleware, HTTP middleware, which comes from Starlet. Starlet middleware's base, base HTTP middleware. Now, we are going to go ahead and do something. You know, the middleware is meant to do something. So let us create a start time variable. We're going to get grab the response. It's await call next with the request. And then we're going to set up our process time equals time dot time minus start time. Then we're going to add on a custom header response dot headers x process time equals string of process time. And we'll return the response. Now, in order to add our middleware to our app, all we need to do is add app, add middleware, my middleware. So now our, our custom middleware that we've created has been added to our app. Okay, what's the matter? What's the matter? Line 1076. It's not at app, it's just app, add middleware. Let's see. Okay, it reloaded. Okay, now let's set up um, app.get. We'll do blah just for fun. And async def blah. We'll just um, return hello world. Something very simple. So let's go ahead. We will reformat this with black. And let's go ahead and reload our, our docs page here. And we go and click try it out and we hit execute. Oh, let me shrink this down just a little bit. I apologize. And let me zoom this in just a little bit. There we go. Hit execute. And you notice we get hello world like we anticipate. But we also have this one extra little response header. It shows us how long it took to do the whole thing. Okay. That's pretty much middleware. It's, it's adding functionality to each route. You can add it to individual routers, or you can add it to your entire app. Um, those are just a couple of things that you can do, just with basic, basic middleware. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to see how this applies to cores, uh, which is um, cross-origin resource sharing. Um, if you have ever built... Um, uh, you know, full stack front end and back end separately, then you've run into issues, headaches, if you will, of um, making a request from the front end that did not pass the pre flight uh, origin, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, we're going to handle this as well. So, what we need to do, we need to, I think I already imported it from Fast API. Um, here. Let's cores middleware. No, I didn't import it already. Okay. So we're going to do from fast API, from fast API, middleware cores import cores middleware. Now we're going to need to set up some origins. So HTTP local host, and we'll do uh, 8000. And we'll do HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000. 
Now, all we need to do, let's move this middleware down here because we still want to use it. I mean, we don't have to, but we can. App.add middleware, cores middleware, and we're just going to say allow origins equals origins. We refresh, try it out, execute, nothing changed. Okay. Now, what we're going to do though, in order to, um, uh, let's see, in order to kind of see what this, how this is really handled, let's create a, a front end app, a very straightforward front end app using Spellkit. So we're going to go into our terminal. Um, let's see, npm init svelte uh, fast API front end. We're just going to do a skeleton project. None, no, no, no. CD fast API front end npm install. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, this is going to be running at localhost 3000. I'm going to have it fetch from the back end and return something. So let's just look at this. We'll go into source routes. Uh, let's do index that's felt there script. And what we're going to do, we're going to use the, um, svelte kit await. It's not svelte kit. I don't think logic await blocks. So all we're going to do, I'm going to create a, um, async function, get data const res equals await fetch http local host 8000 blah const data equals await res dot data if res dot okay return data else throw new error data. Okay. Next, next, next. We need to uh, let promise equals get data. I'm just copying what's going on over here. Um, just instead of get random number, we're going to call get data. And then we'll do const handle click equals promise equals get data. Okay. Now we're going to add in an extra, we're going to add in this stuff here. So we're going to do button on click equals handle click get data. And then we will do await promise P waiting. I can get rid of this for now. That's fine. Then uh, we'll say data. Go away. P um, data is, and we'll say data dot hello because we know that it should have a hello block or a hello attribute. Uh, catch error. P error is error. And then we will close the await block. <laughs> Control save, and we will run our terminal npm run dev. And now let's go to localhost 3000. There. Now we get. Res.data is not a function. JSON. Data is world. Get data, data is world. Okay, and this works because we have this here. Now, this might not work if I just get rid of localhost 3000 because it's still um, localhost and it might not actually care about the port number. So let's refresh the page. Fail to fetch. There we go. 
and you can see over here the error is a um, it's a cores error it's interesting it's showing a get of 200 but it's a cores error okay so we get data we still get the error if we go back in here re-add our, our localhost 3000 get data data is world and it works okay uh, so that's about it for this. Um, there's, you know, not much to, to handle in here. Um, I would recommend um, looking at um, Core's middleware. There's allow origins, allow methods, allow headers, credentials. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can uh, that you can set in here um, if you only want to allow get or post requests. You know, whole whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Uh, in the next video, we are going to uh, touch on, we're going to start to touch on, because this is going to be a large, uh, a long video, we're going to start to touch on um, relational databases with FastAPI. I will see you then.